Size has to be 13 inches to keep, and it was exactly 13 inches. To explain perfect. a 13 inch carapace, which is carapace. a big uh, turtle. It's from front to back, up the middle of just the shell, 13 inches. And that's yeah. just the shell? Just the shell. And the neck on this thing is a foot long in itself. Yeah, you know, I bet. Yeah. Stretch. It's yeah. a neat word, carapace. Kyle learned it two weekends ago, and he's used it like eight times ever since. That happens. Um, it's okay. <laughs> Do you feel good about you? Yeah, feel, feel great. Feel your hair. <laughs> Moving on. Um, so, anyways, we, we catch this thing, we bring it in. The first thing that I find when you're going to clean the turtle is they say you have to keep it in clean water for a week to two weeks. Told you. Really? Yeah. You you put it in the water and then you have to dump it out every day and replace it with fresh new water. Now, this picture here shows the uh, that recycle bin. That's maybe the fourth or fifth day after he's been sitting in that water all day. So it's it's not horribly gross. It's not like mud, but it's also not. You know, Slightly mer- what is mer- What is the idea behind soaking them? It's just like the uh, crayfish. You want to, they take the water in. Purge. They relieve themselves in the water, and it like helps to clean them out. Then you dump them out, put new water in the next day. Then they continue the process until they're clean on the inside. They're Got not, uh, nice. you know, you don't want to drink the water. But How many leeches fell off of this thing? Uh, none. Really? Nope. I we- picked them off. <laughs> oh, really? Oh. Yeah. And I you- got probably 30. Are you nice. serious? I would say they hide, they hide up under its legs the inside. Thing, the oh thing that got God. me, the yes. thing that got me was while I was cleaning the turtle, I'm like kneeling and doing stuff, and I had forgotten that as I'm picking out the leeches, <laughs> I was putting them over here. And at one point, I had like stepped and moved, and I looked down and I see tentacles uh, just coming up out of the ground. I'm like, Duh, uh. scary, <laughs> gross just, little creatures. I yeah. don't like nope. leeches. No, nope. I don't. No. So you put him in this water. Mm-hmm. He purges himself out, cleans him out. Clean water. You do it for a week to two weeks. It's supposed I did to it for a week and three days. It's supposed to help with the flavor until it goes clean. Yeah. And you don't feed them during that time. Nope. Not a pet. They only eat every like day and a half, which watching a turtle in the wild, I understand because they're slow and they don't seem to understand how to actually grab food. They're scavengers. <laughs> Unless it's your finger, then they know how to grab that. <laughs> they're oh, yeah. scavengers, so they don't like quick moving stuff too yeah, often. Yeah. Um, so it's not like, you know. It's not like you're horribly starving him. Sure. It's a little, you know, a little Clean rough, him. which is why I wasn't going to go the full two weeks. I'm glad the water cleaned out after okay. about a week. But uh, Moving on. So anyways, so uh, after the water cleans out, the first thing you do is you remove the head. Okay. Which kills it. <laughs> I love that. Uh, so what you do is you take a, a <laughs> stick. I had a broom handle. Uh, you put it in front. It grabs onto it, you know, with the, the quick bite and then holds on. And then I took that. Put it over a log. The chopping block. And then you took my uh, took my axe, which I use for my chickens, and so it's sharp. I know it's sure. Good. Done it before. Uh, it did take me two. Oh God. Uh, yeah. Two hacks. However, I know he was dead after the first one because I made it all the way through the the vertebrae and all that stuff. It was just the. Yeah. It was honestly the skin that was I think probably oh, the sure. hardest part to get through. Did you wear the cool like uh, mask thing <laughs> nice. with the eyes nope. cut out? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Got got some stuff on my cheek. It was pretty gross. Okay. I stopped there and, and went and cleaned up. That was gross. Um, so after that, uh, is that my sharpener in that picture? Do you no. have my sharpener? That's a, that's a sharpener that comes with like every single knife that you buy of that particular brand. I can't that find mine. I think it's mine. Moving on. Um, <laughs> so I don't have, I don't clean turtles often, so I don't have a lot of the gear. And on top of that, someone that I live with has decided to uh, utilize my cleaning table, so it's covered in. Bee spray and, and other makeup, makeup, other sort of <laughs> garage stuff. You so I was like, one person. I'm not gonna bother cleaning that up. I'm just gonna do it on the on Make floor a on a piece of plywood. Um, <laughs> I don't have grips, which you're supposed to use to hold the feet so that it can hang down and let the blood drip out. Uh, so I used some con of bears. Mm-hmm. Or the traps we're talking Hate about. Those things. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then, uh, and then you got a knife. You want to make sure your knife is sharp. I learned that about halfway through. I'm like, God, this is taking forever. And then I found that sharpener, started sharpening. I'm like, this is easy. Why haven't I been doing this the whole time? Um, the hardest part to get through, though, is the skin. Okay. For sure. So what's 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 in that step then, as far as doing that? So in that step, you take off the head, and then you use the uh, your vice grips or counter bear or whatever to attach to the back legs. That's brutal. And dangle the. Well, he's got no head. He's dead. It's yeah, he's, fine. He's dead. I I know. It just is a. He looks and rough. You, you hang <laughs> yeah. him so that the the blood can come out. Okay. Uh, the heart continues to pump actually. For how um, long? 
Uh, well, I would say <laughs> I got to the heart about four hours after I decapitated him because I would let him sit for a little bit, and it was still pumping. Wow. Oh, that's yeah. incredible. So uh, cleaning mammals so would you, like we're used to. They die instantly. They die pretty quick. They're warm-blooded. The metabolism is really high. So, so how long you, would you recommend someone a hanging a turtle animal. based on that information then? At least four hours. Okay. Yeah, because nerves were still running; it was still uh-huh. moving. So, warm-blooded animals, there. If you take off the head, you remove the the brain, the the brain. It uh, medulla. It uh, the cell death because of the way our bodies work happens quick, and there's basically you die. You, yeah. Maybe a couple seconds, up to like a minute of some nerves, but that's it. Cold-blooded animals, because they have such low metabolism, you cut off their head. And they can continue to move, and and not just like little nerves, but like reflex Lock, movements. Straight up fight you. I had a duck jump and fly after it didn't have a head anymore. That's like now, when they say running around with a chicken with his head yeah, cut off. Nice. It can't feel it can't feel pain anymore. It's dead. It's just reflexes. But it it's in that middle area. It's a weird. <laughs> it is a bit of a gray area. That makes me a little uncomfortable. So how long would you recommend, <laughs> based on what you learned? How long should someone hang their turtle to bleed them after they cut the head off, so that they don't have to experience the weird situation you oh, had? Oh, there's a, a, a day, two days, three days. I don't know. Okay, we'll say six it's hours. Warm. Six to eight hours. It's warm Absolutely. outside, so I couldn't just let it. Yeah. Hang. You know. Um, would you say six hours at least, huh? Probably. Okay. Yeah, possibly more. Um, so anyways, first step is after you hang it up, then you take your really sharp knife and you go along the whole outside of the shell. Anywhere there's skin, you're separating the skin from the shell. Okay. Then from there, you take it and you pull it down. You can see all these little sinewy, membrane things. Yeah. And you take your sharp knife and you run it right where the skin meets the meat. Okay. Well, it looks like and you're pulling the skin away there to, to show separate, that. And then you, you do that. So you get all the way down to the, the fingernails, which they got huge fingernails. Um, I'm Pain all four him. feet. <laughs> and then from there, uh, you remove the feet. So here you got the front left, and I've removed the foot. I've removed all the skin. Um, For those of you listening to this podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, whatever else, you can actually see all this video mm-hmm. content that we're explaining in these pictures. If you go to our YouTube channel, The Grimy Outdoors, you can also see this. So continue, Jeff. It's one of the few unfortunate things where if you're just listening, you're missing out pretty you're much. You're losing. <laughs> <laughs> you're <not>. <laughs> My <laughs> man's got the, all the skin off his feet and legs uh-huh. now. Uh-huh. So after that, you uh, you remove any skin that you can from like the neck, the tail. Um, the neck, the back. Yeah. <laughs> There's several cracks you can, you can get into. <laughs> got it. Um, so then, once you've removed all the skin and all four feet, I did three because I was hanging them from one of the feet. Um, once you have removed all the feet, then you can move on to actually separating the shell. Um, from there, and this I thought was weird because my first thought was, how on earth are we going to get the shell off? Because that's like the hardest part is right. the, you know, getting the shell off. But what you actually do is... You take your knife. There's a really thin, there's a really thin um, uh, seam in between the bottom shell and the top shell, the plate and the carapace. I think it is. Okay. Oh, yeah. um, Twice. And you can actually see I've already removed it on the bottom of that picture, um, where you just take your knife and honestly you just cut through it. It's not hard. Okay. It just goes right through, and then that separates the bottom plate from the, the thing you think of when I say shell. So that's not a shell. The, the bottom part. It, the, it's two pieces. So you're, it's uh, you're cutting off the bottom of the, the shell, mm-hmm. like on his underside. You're yeah. separating. It's tool belt. It's a pretty clear. <laughs> it's yeah. It's, it's fanny pack. And it's a pretty clear line. All jokes aside, fanny pack wise, yeah. it's a pretty distinct line on where that meets the shell. Yeah. Yeah. Super easy. Okay. Um, then from there, kind of like when you were removing the skin, you do the same thing with that bottom plate, where you just go in, run your knife along the bottom there until you remove all the meat. Okay. It comes right off. Okay. Clean separation. So that's and then, uh, that's that pulled off right there. Is that yep. bottom? Then you got a bowl of turtle. Okay. From there, because now you got the turtle hanging. You take him off. And you put him just on the ground or something. Because does that, that point, move us into step three? And yeah. At th- and at this point, you still haven't taken the guts out. Okay, so there's yes. there's your bowl of turtle. Now, what's the next step? Wow, wow. it was looking desirable, and now it's not. Mm-hmm. It looks like a stew. <laughs> <laughs> From oh, there, uh, what you do is kind of similar to when we clean deer. Uh, I took my hatchet and put it up onto the the pelvis. Okay. And 
beat it to break the pelvis open. From there, you can get at all the joints in the hips. Okay. So you go in there with your knife, and it's honestly just separating anything that you can find in there. Don't cut the big bag that has the pee in it. Okay. <laughs> hey, now, he's been in clean water for several days, so it, if you do, okay. it's probably not the end of the world. But Where, where um, is that bag in this picture? Uh... It's it's inside the. Okay. It's in there still. Okay, so now you. It looks like there's a piece pulled off of here in this picture. Yeah. So. At that point, I've removed both the legs. Okay. So you go the in, back legs. You cut all. Are the those meat, the front? Yeah, that's the back. Cut all the meat around the joint after you've broken the pelvis open. Okay. Then you grab the leg and just twist, and it's a, a ball joint. Okay. So it just kind of separates after you twist once or twice around. Okay. Are so, the are the guts above the body? Mm -hmm. Like, are they up in the cavity of the mm -hmm. shell? So interesting. That, that's strange because you would picture them being like on the bottom, uh -huh. like yeah. by the bottom nope. carapace thing. But they're so they're, they're, well, foreign they're car. well protected. Guts are up in the shell. Yep. Ma it makes sense from a protection standpoint. Yeah, yeah. yeah. trunks in the front. <laughs> <laughs> we usually have businesses in the front. It's like um, a um, Porsche. But anyway, yeah. Okay. Um, so from there, what you do then is then you do basically the same thing with the other legs. Okay. So you uh, just pull them aside, you pull your knife out, you separate down to the joint, twist two or three times around, leg comes off. There's a couple um, ligaments and things that you got to cut through that I noticed in the front that maybe I just couldn't see in the back, but I didn't, it seemed like the front legs were a little harder to get off. Okay. Um, but once you do that, then you take the whole thing, put it over a bucket, and then just scrape Okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I didn't take a picture of that. <laughs> um, but all of the guts and everything is just attached to the top of the shell. Okay. By like a thin membrane, so you go in and you kind of dig at it, and you just pull those guts off some bits, and then they just kind of fall off. Okay. The only thing you have to do is and you separate. just cast those away. That's they're not in this yes. picture. You uh, do have to separate them from the tail. Okay. Which um, isn't bad because again, you've kind of purged the turtle out already. Um, but once you do that, then you can separate the tail and the neck, which isn't really that hard either. It's just going and scraping your knife underneath the neck and the tail at the at the shell. And then once you do that, similar, it's a little harder because at that point you're dealing with neck that is attached to the shell. So you have to get through the vertebrae and all that stuff. But you twist that until that breaks and you can feel it. And as long as you've cut away all the ligaments and everything, then you can just separate the neck, the tail. Uh, and then, at that point, you get the back straps. Is that what that? See, they look like back straps because they have the tender, or it really is like a tenderloin almost, because it looks yeah. it's on the inside of the um, yeah. spine, so it'd be the tenderloin. But it looks like it's got that same, if you pulled those tenderloins off of a turkey, they would be identical to that. The, 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 yeah. the, the white meat that I'm seeing there. Yeah, the, the top. Right of all the meat, that is the tenderloin, the back strap, whatever you want to call okay, it. I was going to ask where those. Yeah, it looks from. like it looks the like other, the tenderloins you find in a turkey, mm -hmm. the identical. Other bit of white meat that's in the middle there. Yeah, that's the neck. The I was neck look, it looked like meat. fat. That was white meat. Yeah, which when I first cut it open, I was like, oh well, that's disappointing. You would think the neck would have so much muscle in it, but I thought it was fat when I first cut it open. And I'm like, oh, that's nice looking meat. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Um, so you get your two legs. The two back legs, two front legs, the neck, the tail, and the tenderloin. Tender uh, the tenderloin's weird though because so you can see in there you see the what we'll call the spine. There's the ribs that come off that that fuse with the shell. You have to cut through those. So the only tool that I used that wasn't on here was snippers. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you got to snip through the ribs and then break those off, and then the meat is underneath that. A crazy species. The worst part about this whole process was that the... You were you the whole the time? The nerves, <laughs> the, every single muscle fought me the entire time. What? Meaning? So, so like I said, it, it doesn't die. It, mm -hmm. they, they, they keep going with the nerves. It's like a, like a reflex. Like, if you oh, okay. were to... You know, say you had something sharp behind your hand and something hot in front of your hand. If you touch the hot thing, even though you know if you back up real quick, you're going to stab your hand, you'd still do it because of the reflex of, ooh, that's hot. Mm -hmm. Well, it's that's like that. Example. Example. It's, oh, like, right. it's exactly like that, but but without the, the brain. You're not, <laughs> you're not alive anymore, but that reflex is still there. And because they have such low metabolism, it just keeps happening for a long time. I wonder if it, after you 
beheaded it. If you stuck it in the fridge or freezer for a little bit, how much that would help? It would, I would have to drain, drain the blood it would, out, though. It would slow it down. Yeah. But that would, I think, preserve it longer. I agree. Well, I, I'm not saying as far as preservation. I'm just saying as far as fighting. A no, no, he's saying he's saying it would preserve the fight ability. Oh, oh, okay. yeah. Because you're again slowing down the metabolism, so it's going to be even longer that it would then take. There's something so, with that. Well, that it wouldn't can be able have... to fight as much. Is what I'm saying. True. Because it's like when you pick up a frog. If you happen to find a frog in like late fall, it's going it, to. It's uh, if you <laughs> slow. if you cleaned uh, the turtle in a deep freeze in like a walk-in cooler. Then it would probably be better, mm -hmm. I would assume. Okay, but who yeah. has that? So while I'm removing the skin off the one leg, the other leg is going. Stop <laughs> it! Oh man, no. that's weird. <laughs> it's is bizarre. The tail is like, I'm gonna be over here, so I'm in your way. I'd be like, no. There you go. That is nutty. <laughs> no, seriously, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> seriously, stop. That's it. I, I removed the tenderloins off the back there, and as I was cutting them, now at this point, there's no heart, <laughs> there's no anything, and the tenderloin muscles are still going and contracting every time I cut. It's incredible. Weird. That's nutty. Which at that point, you know it's dead. You know there's, there's no nothing, there There's nothing to be supply. alive. <laughs> there's no nerves anymore. It's just, I, you know. So that was a little. Just because I'm used to cleaning mammals, so right. I'm their dad. Once right. they're dead, they're dead. It's once it's done, it's done. But yeah. th this was a very at what unique point? Experience at what me. point in the experience were you like, "This is meat," instead of like, "That's a gross turtle." We named Franklin after the tenderloin stopped moving. Oh, that's when it was dude. meat. Yeah, it's a long way in the process. Yeah, it is. That's, for you. that's a couple it, hours. It, it, yeah. all, it all moved. How long did it take the whole you? Whole time. Um, I stopped several times because I got frustrated. <laughs> Based on how he skinned that coyote, it's three I days. Would say, <laughs> uh, I would say the actual time that I spent cleaning it, probably maybe an hour and a half. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, it? Oh, wow. Yeah. I, mean, I guess 10. Um, if, I, if, I, if I attempted again, I could probably do it, and I would say maybe half hour, 45 minutes, now that I know my way around the inside. Right. That's pretty good. But, uh, yeah, it was... It was it was rough. I didn't. I didn't cry. You're not yeah. crying. You <laughs> cried. What? 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 Think. What part of it? I, I've heard that all the different parts of the the, the turtle taste different. And yeah. looking at the meat and the wide variety of looks of meat, mm -hmm. I can. I can. I can definitely believe that. Yeah. Nothing about that even looks like it all came from the same critter. I, no. I, I've heard that also. That it, it's very particular the way you prepare. Prepare the different yeah. cuts. Oh. How do you think you're gonna shotgun tenderloins? Do it. Oh, no, uh, I cleaned it. <laughs> you are gonna do a soup. Yeah. Now, okay. So but now with the tenderloins, I want to cook those your separate. Your favorite restaurant, okay, which is Olga's. Okay. Yeah, makes a soup. It's called Texas Roadhouse. Peasant <laughs> Olga's soup. the second. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Um, it's called peasant soup, and I had somebody come up to me and go, "Oh, you should make the turtle soup that they make at Olga's," and I guess someone what? there. Told them that it was turtle in the soup. It's probably my but dad honestly, messing with someone. The soup looks really good, and I think I'm gonna attempt to like get, get inspiration from their soup, yeah. and then kind of make my own. You know, because I don't I, know exactly how they make it. I'd so. like to try just just fry it up and yeah. just try it. Like, I want to know how, how it is. You do, if, I think we make you, the tenderloins that way. Yes, I agree. What you would need to do is you you parboil it. So you you boil it on low for like. I don't know, 20, 30 minutes okay. to actually cook the meat, and then you use, um, uh, and then you like, you can batter it and deep fry it if you want. But you don't have to like deep fry it to cook the meat. You just deep fry it to cook the. I don't even want to deep fry. I just want to try it as what it is, as what it is as possible, just to yeah. know. Yeah. Well, right. we're gonna be doing that in our uh, studio kitchen here. We have some segments that we're gonna be filming for mm -hmm. season four of the Greenway Outdoors yeah. that will be coming to you in January.